everybody, it's Bruce from Nature Calls, and this is a special problem that a friend of mine who does ski mountaineering or the backcountry skiing, and he wanted a quick deploy tarp that he could put up while he was getting ready to go skiing or lunch, and then in the worst case scenario, have some kind of survival. So this is the tent that I came up with, and this is the build process. All right, got done with my down comforter, and so I'm ready for another project. Can't can't wait, can't wait. And uh, this one is very exciting. I've got some of the new uh, Mountain Series Sil Nylon fabric from Ripstop by The Roll. And I have, uh, so exciting because I do a lot with Hilleberg tents and tarps and all that, and their fabric is, in my opinion, the top fabric out there, uh, especially when it comes to strength and and uh, hydrostatic head. Now the Rips Up by the Roll came out with this mountain series, and in all practical senses of the word, this is just like the Hilleberg Curlon. Um, their own little twist on it, which is really nice. So it's their uh, 30D um, sil nylon. It's got a um, real nice ripstop yarn. I forgot what the one is. I'll put the specs down below uh, for its ripstop. It's impregnated with silicone on both sides, which adds a ton, a ton of strength. Um, and what I'm going to be making out of this is a um, like an ultralight tarp, and it uh, it'll be for a friend of mine who does uh, ski mountaineering, and they they need to have like a pocket size tarp that for most of the time can just be set up for them to have lunch under or some some protection, um, some kind of simple you know bring it out all the time um, you know at least once it, once a trip to have a shelter, but also can be something that in a pinch can be a survival type of tarp. So um, this will be my first design and um, so what I decided to go with is three yards of this really nice blue. They don't have anything brighter than this. I wish they did. I wish they had like a, a bright yellow or a bright red, uh, something that could be used in an emergency. But this, this is kind of the brightest they had was this blue. Uh, they have like black and gray and those kind of things. So hopefully they'll come out with more I got three yards of this and it's 64 inches wide. So basically I'm going to be making a nine by five tarp um, for the, for the um, reinforcements. I got the same, same stuff in the black. So this black will be for all my reinforcements. And then for the tie outs, it's another new product from Rips Up by the Rolls. They're Venom Webbing. Um, Supposed to be very very strong, and I uh, got it in the three eight. So I'll be doing all the all the tie outs and venom webbing, and then um, then it's going to be how how can we set this up, say in the snow, um, and what kind of configurations can we come up with a nine by five tarp uh, that's easy um, that uh, can be set up in the snow. So four season tarp. Uh, let's let's get to it. First thing I've got to do is uh, cut my reinforcements, and I'll do that with my a soldering pen. So the easiest way I have found to cut uh, my reinforcements is to use the soldering pen in a bowl. And so I just go around the bowl. circle pretty cool I've got all these circles and I uh, don't need them in circle form I need them in half circle form so just fold them in half use my cutting mat and line up that and voila so I've got uh, just the, uh, the pullouts. I'm not going to do like the double-double. I'm just going to do the single 
uh, reinforcement on this one. But this stuff's so strong, um, I think I got into it, but it's a 1.1 ounce sill nylon with the 60 yarn uh, ripstop on 30D fabric. And then they, with the silicone, it's like 1.3 ounces in the, in the end. So super, super strong. So I'm just gonna cut up all my little circles, uh, the big circles, they're gonna go in the corner tie-outs. And so I, that's more of a custom cut on those. So um, I'll just cut these all in half and uh, we'll start gluing them up. Now I'm putting uh, the reinforcements that I cut out of the black and I made marks um, where I think I want this tarp to happen. Um, this is a prototype and after it's been used I'm gonna I'm gonna be real interested in whether or not these are, are gonna be optimal. So but um, I've just made them I made them evenly spaced and um, you know it, it, it may work just fine. So we'll we'll see after it's used this this ski season. Um, but now I'm just uh, what I do is I glue on these with a uh, it's a silicone 100% silicone and a little bit of mineral spirits to, to get it a little bit easier to work with. It's too sticky other than that and um, I just use my finger and uh, get a little bit on there and then wipe it on. This glass coffee table works great because uh, I can just peel it all off later. So I just kind of get get some on there to get it glued on and then find the mid spot you can fold it up in half and drop it on and uh, then I just come back and glue on the put some glue on the rest And I'll just do, um, I'll do a few at a time, then I'll go do something else, let it dry. If I had a bigger work surface, then of course, you know, I could do more, but this works just fine. Center it, push all the bubbles out. I don't know if this, you know, my theory is I want the tension to be spread out, not just not just on the webbing points where that's just like two spots. I want to try and distribute the weight. Yeah, so now to do the hemming, I already did that short side, but I just pull it over maybe a quarter of an inch and then I just pull it over another quarter of an inch. And in the beginning, it's real hard once you get it started. So like right there and jam it up underneath there. And if that's too hard, your little trick is to kind of um, start it back a little bit. And I'll drop my foot on it. drop my needle down and I'll make sure my length is set right okay now what I can do is I can just go ahead and reverse that'll get me to that front and then I'll come back yeah this gets a little bit, a bit thick Kind of straighten it out a little bit. So I'm down from my last project. And I just I just hold it. I don't pin it. And you could take off the selvage edge, but I find that I can just tuck it up underneath and it's gone. Now I've come to one of the tie-out 
areas there are the reinforcement guy outs what I'll do is I'll just go about halfway across and I estimate right about there okay so now what I need is to take my take my webbing that I'm using this really cool really cool webbing uh, vape uh, venom webbing and I get about a six inch piece right out there and singe the edges a little bit Now I just do, I do kind of a, a ribbon fold like that. Um, had a great conversation uh, last night with doing like an overlap like that to minimize your holes. Just as, like one on one side, one on the other. Um, I'm a sailor and the way they do sails is they actually like get a clue on a sail, they'll, they'll go like that. So the key is to have to, and that's the direction of the stress on the sail so you want to direct your stress so I'm going to direct it in two directions like that so now what I do is like I have the needle drop down I lift it up and I can set that down underneath there and drop the needle foot back down and make my little adjustments that looks good. And then this is just tack it in place and I'll come back and um, do the full reinforcement here in a minute. And that's where I'm saving some 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 holes. I don't want to do a ton of, of again putting holes. Now I'm going to write. Actually, I did two layers right here of paneling in these corners. There's backing right here, and then a bigger backing right there. So I'm going to just sew over those. And that should be plenty. And I'm going to bring this all the way down to the corner. It's going to get a little sticky because it's so thick. And it'll just ride right out. A lock stitch there. Now just ride out to the ends here. Then I just follow around the webbing. And I'm not doing any big X's or anything like that. It's just really not. I don't think it's that necessary. I think that this gets plenty of firm hold. And then one more. And lock it out. Good, and that's all locked in. So there we go. Just, uh, up and down around the perimeters, and uh, good to go. Trim it up, and we'll do the rest. So this is just this is one of the reinforcement patches, black on the back of the blue. Of one of the side tie outs, so I've just started and I'm going to uh, do first a right around the whole edge of that black piece, tack that together. Not too fast. <laughs> Right up 
to the hem. Then I will go down about halfway. And I'll do another arch and I'll try and tack these in at that time. So, kind of hold them in place as they go around. There we go. Make sure nothing gets stuck underneath. Over to the hem. Spin it around. And I'll go right down to the webbing again. Go across. And I'll go out one piece. Get near the end. And then this is where I just work it around. I don't do big um, cross patterns or anything like that. Um, I find that this thread and everything about this is plenty strong enough um, to hold this down without overdoing the sewing. And I'll go out that a little bit. One more right to the edge. Spin it around. And I'll go back out this one. and I'll take this one out all the way to the edge so it tacks it down nice and tight to the hemline. So lock stitch it out. There we go. That made a real simple bag. Um, kind of measured out how big, how big it was when it was folded up. And uh, now I'm just going to do a simple um, bag that cinches, a cinch bag. Um, I'm not going to do like a uh, special box on the bottom or anything like that because it needs to try and lay flat. Um, and there's plenty of kind of uh, tutorials on how to do a bag. But um, just do it inside out and and this will just, I'm going to sew this onto the inside of one of the corners and so it'll never be away from the tarp. And this will hold all the little lines and stuff that I'm going to be adding on. features I want to have is the ability to use their skis to um, make dead man's for. So I'm going to make, I'm taking uh, 20 inches, let's see if this works. And just create some loops that will be easy to untie. So I'm not going to do any special berries or anything like that and I'll leave these tails I'm gonna do it right and so I'm gonna create these little tails here and then on one of the long sides of the tarp. I'm going to have these already in place like that so so what we have here now they can put their skis and have these all along one, on the long side so they can put their skis in there to make to set it in as a dead man and if they want them they can just pull on those and out they go so I'm going to put in about uh, three or four of those for them So, that's good. 
and these are made out of am steel 764 am steel so they are super lightweight and super strong and uh, easy to move I can just pull that with their gloves and it should come right off so now the next stage are the big tie outs now the final piece is going to be I'm using these it's, it's a Hilleberg um, Vectran tie outs and they are the best as far as I'm concerned as far as uh, snow usage and the uh, tie out portion and putting on these carabiners so it'll be real quick and easy uh, to adjust especially with ski gloves on and there we go I can add four of those now hopefully um, I'll get some more photos of it but our setup um, so we can see how it looks but this is for um, they can put their trekking poles in these and then use this to guy it out Alright, I hope you enjoyed that and this is of course the first test round of that design I think it's gonna work pretty good we'll see after the ski season but uh, put all the specs of the materials I use down below alright take care bye now